Hi guys, this is SDJRSNF88 speaking with the start of a new series, building a micro layout in a hotel room. So as you all know, I'm currently staying in a hotel room while I find some more long-term accommodation down here in Devon uh, for my job working at Railway Modeler. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I toyed around with the idea uh, with you guys about building a micro layout to keep me occupied on evenings in my hotel room. As you know, I've been doing a number of uh, other modeling projects such as renumbering locos and uh, doing a bit of weathering, uh, but I sort of thought about potentially building a little layout inside a wrapping paper box, much like Winter's End, which I know you guys really, really enjoyed. So uh, after talking about the idea and putting it to you guys, um, the basically the overwhelming feedback was, yes, give it a go. So I got some baseboards from Scale Model Scenery. We'll take a closer look at those later on in the video. And the idea is to build another layout inside a wrapping paper box. So the next uh, sort of step was to of course choose a theme for this layout and I uh, started started toying around with a few different ideas you know industrial scenes you know involving industrial locos such as the uh, new Hornby uh, Ruston and of course the Peckets uh, but I kept on coming back to the sort of same sort of conclusion and I know you guys know what I'm going to say is it's going to be another World War One theme layout I know you guys uh, have really enjoyed um, the builds, especially of Amiens 1918 and my growing ROD fleet, so it made sense to basically build another layout to this theme. So the idea is this layout will be set in the Argonne Forest, which is another major battle during the final offensive of the Great War. And this battle was predominantly run by the Americans, and sadly it has become known, um, especially to Americans, as the deadliest American battle in history. Uh, basically the Americans were uh, challenged with uh, tasked with taking over the Argonne Forest which was heavily fortified by the Germans and this is what this layout will depict. It will de depict the scene after the battle. Uh, the Americans would have taken over this part of the forest and they would have captured a German bunker which they are now using to their advantage and uh, basically using it as a supply depot for the tanks and men that will be continuing with the advance. So without further ado, let's take a close look at some of the plans that I've drawn up for this new proposed World War One layout. So here is a look at the track plan for the layout. Now this is only a rough design, uh, the layout might change depending on once I've got things positioned on the boards, but for now I'm quite happy with this design. So looking at uh, an above and a side on view here, uh, we have three sidings and one line leading in from the off-scene section. Now, the idea is the layout can be controlled both as a, a solo board, as it is, but also with a fiddle yard attached, which means I have a lot more operational potential. Now, all of this is designed to fit in a wrapping paper box, much like Winter's End. So, I'll be using the Scale Model Scenery's baseboards, which we'll take a closer look at in a moment. So as you can see, we've got the line coming in from the left, and it splits into three sidings. Now, the two bottom sidings are the main supply sidings, and this is where the majority of trains will go. Now, they will either be propelled in with a locomotive pushing the wagons and then pulled straight out, or an idea that I've been toying around with is the train will actually come in with a locomotive leading, and the tips of these sidings will be isolated, so the loco can be isolated right at the end, and then another loco from one of the other sidings can then release that locomotive. Now, I plan to run the layout on an analogue and a digital system, much like how I run Amiens 1918. Now, with the digital system, the isolating sections won't matter. I can simply just have two locomotives under digital control, uh, probably both ball winds, uh, both fitted with sound, and uh, it'll be a, quite an interesting uh, thing to do. It's a lot more um, things involved than rather than just running a train around. Uh, as the idea of not having a run around on this layout uh, is purely because I just think the boards would be too short. And of course, having like a head shunt and a, a sort of a release um, makes it a bit more um, fun to operate. 
Now that third siding, you'll see there are two circular sections on this uh, section of a track. Now this is wagon turntables. And uh, basically these are little turntables you get in the Pico range. And these are for little four wheel wagons which are being loaded into the fort. And you can see the main feature of this layer is actually to four entrances into a bunker system. Now there were many bunkers through the Argonne Forest and this is something I really wanted to capture on this layout. So the idea is a locomotive would push uh, these little four wheel wagons in loaded with shells then they'd be put onto the turntables where they'd be turned by hand and the soldiers would then push those wagons inside the fort where they'd be loaded into guns and um, other sort of stores actually inside these bunkers. Now the idea is these turntables will not work. They are basically sort of scenic um, little details. They're, they're just for sort of you know, scenic purposes. And of course this does raise a problem as well with running trains. Of course locomotives won't be able to cross these but if the locomotive is propelling the wagons, the wagons will. So that is the idea, is basically it'd be an extra storage siding for wagons, and it's really just sort of to add to the effect. I've seen pictures of these sort of little turntables and these sort of bunker entrances um, at a number of locations, particularly French forts, but also German bunkers, which I think these will obviously be based on, uh, being set in the Argonne Forest, which have been captured by the Americans and sort of being used against them. Uh, you pictures of these little wagons being pushed in by hands with big shells literally just riding on top. So the idea is I want to try and capture that with this. Uh, inside the bunkers there'll be sort of a, an interpretation of what's inside the bunkers so you can actually see inside. Uh, there will be troops obviously marching through there, there'll be hopefully pipes you know, for air vents and stuff, uh, shells and of course I hope to add a bit of lighting to give it a bit more atmosphere as well. So as you can see, the majority of the scene is covered in trees, uh, obviously being set in the forest. So around the whole sort of back scene uh, and the sides, this will be covered with woodland. Around the supply siding at the front, it'd be much like the supply siding on Amiens 1918. There'd be lots of trench clutter, there'd be lots of uh, boxes, shells, ammunition uh, cases, and of course troops marching around. I also plan to put a couple of Renault FT tanks, as these were used during the battle as well. As for the figures, I hope to use WD model figures again, and I know he has a selection of American infantry, and of course I will hopefully in due course get a couple of those uh, to dot about, uh, much like the little cameo scenes I've got on Amiens 1918, to sort of bring this layout to life. So these are the baseboards I'll be using for the project. They are the Scale Model Scenery BB018 micro layout baseboards in a box number two. And these boards are designed to fit in a wrapping paper box, as you can see what the boards are sitting on top of now. And this box might look familiar, as basically this is the same design as what my other micro layout, Winter's End, fits in. And these boards uh, basically are part of a line of micro layout boards available from Scale Model Scenery. These are currently the smallest ones designed to fit in a box. They do a larger version which is designed to fit in a Christmas tree box. They also do a number of individual boards which are designed to interlock with each other and basically make a micro layer board of any size. They're not designed in particular to fit in any box or storage uh, box currently on the market but they are great for building sort of little micro layers and building on sections of fiddle yards and I've got a couple of those as well. The great thing about these boards they are very very easy to assemble and you can chop and change them about. And all you need to do to actually assemble them is just have a bottle of wood glue and a bit of patience. But they can be easily assembled within 15 minutes. They really are great kits. So what I plan to do is get the uh, kit out of the packaging. Uh, basically do a sort of a, a dry assembly without using any glue. Just to check everything all lines up. And while that is assembled I will then place some track on it. Uh, measure out um, what sort of track I can fit in the area. And also... Uh, mark out where I plan to put the uh, tunnel portal for the fiddle yard and mark out the drill holes as well so I can uh, bolt on another baseboard at a later date for the fiddle yard section. So it's been about 20 minutes since filming the last clip and I've quickly dry assembled the baseboard and positioned what 009 track I have to hand on it and uh, as you can see the plan is sort of already coming to life. So you can see the main line coming in from the left, 
Um, obviously, I've got to cut the hole in the back scene to allow that to run through to a potential fiddle yard. And you can see I've positioned some woodland scenic uh, trees in front of that to basically camouflage the trains coming in. The idea is the landscape behind that will be built up. There'll be loads of trees on top of that as well. I sort of make it a tree arch. And then that landscape will gradually rise as it goes along towards the right of the baseboards, where it will then come on to the bunker entrances, which are consist well, which basically consist of these two Pico uh, cattle creeps. And these are from the Wheels Kits range, and they're designed as a cattle creep, as I say, to go underneath uh, um, any of your sort of railways, double O scale railways. But they look very similar to some of the bunker entrances that were built as part of the fortifications in the Argonne Forest. Um, there were a number of villages in the area, and of course these were completely flattened uh, during the conflict, um, during the basically the German invasion, um, you know, where the French and the Germans were fighting. And these villages were flattened and the basically the fortifications built by the Germans were built using the remnants of these villages. And in fact, some of them were actually disguised into the ruins, uh, making them very, very hard to spot. There's a very famous uh, sort of pillbox that was built in uh, an iconic ruin of a church in the Argonne Forest. And I only found out about that recently, but if you look at the tower in the centre of the church, well, what looks like part of the church is actually a pillbox. Uh, so it's very well camouflaged. So this brickwork, or stonework I should say, on these arches is very similar to the stonework um, that is basically used um, by the towns in that area. So I'm going to paint them up to the sort of same sort of grey colour and hopefully that will make a uh, sort of a really nice sort of entrance which ties in well with the theme. As you can see in front of that we got the uh, Pico 009 wagon turntables. Uh, I've given them a quick spin, <laughs> if you pardon the pun, and they actually do turn, but I've got to drill them into the baseboard, so I'll probably take the baseboard into the office and drill a hole so they sit in there flush and can be connected to the track. So, as mentioned, I'm running short on track, so I can't position two bits of rail currently going into where the bunker will be, or the sections of track that will sort of continue along to the right. So as you can see at the front, we've got the two supply tracks. Uh, the isolating sections are obviously not on there at the moment, but they will be positioned on the end there and there's just enough space there to fit a Baldwin, which is of course the larger locomotives in the uh, trench fleet. So that will hopefully fit in there nicely with a couple of um, the bogey wagons should fit in behind each loco and those sidings. So there should be enough for a loco and two wagons, which is brilliant. Uh, as mentioned, the whole rear area will be raised and this will continue on around to the right uh, and come down the uh, right back scene there. The front will be flat, and this will be where all the storage depot is, where basically the shells and the um, crates and the men and hopefully the Renault tanks will be sitting. So this will be in this area around here. Then that brings us neatly back onto the trees, and of course the trees around there will also be built up to create this thick woodland um, that you know obviously becomes the Argonne Forest. So anyway, I'm really pleased with how it's looking so far. Let me know what you think in the comments section below and I will see if I can correct those in the next update. So I guess that's all for this update and I hope you enjoyed your first look at Argonne Forest and I hope to bring you more progress on the layout in the not too distant future. Like Amiens 1918, I plan to take my time on the build so there might be a bit of a gap between the next update. Uh, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to cracking on with this layout and uh, hopefully um, sort of building a layout that can uh, sort of be paired alongside Amiens 1918, hopefully in the not too distant future. So anyway, as always, leave your thoughts and uh, comments in the uh, section below. Uh, I guess that's all that's left for me to say is this has been SDJRSNF88 speaking and thanks for watching.